Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to resolve a couple of very common import issues when you're importing in your DAS characters into Character Creator 3. So as you may know, we uh, do that via the Transformer tool right up here on the top left. So I'm going to show you an example here of something that you may encounter. Uh, we're going to call this, uh, load up this FBX called Mesh Hidden Page, all right? And we'll try and load that up. And what's going to happen is we're going to get a little bit of an error. It's not going to import. You can see it pops up with this no compatible profile and it won't load. Okay. So the reason for this is because we, because character creator three doesn't recognize that character for one reason or the other. In this particular case, it's because we have hidden mesh on that character. It's actually a G8 character and it has hidden meshes uh, on the character. So character creator three won't recognize it because the mesh has been modified from the original G8 character. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can resolve this sort of issue. Let's go uh, pop over here into Daz here. And I just have a G8 female character loaded up. What I'm going to do is throw a couple of uh, shoes on her. We're going to go over to wardrobe and give her some page sh sneakers here. Uh, sneakers. All right. So this issue pops up uh, because of this. So if we go to the sneakers and we make the sneakers invisible, you can see that the character's uh, mesh has automatically been hidden. Okay. So when you export this FPX into Character Creator 3, it's not going to recognize it has a G8 character because it's missing some, some mesh on the feet. Okay, so there's a few different ways that we can resolve that. The first way is to use the geometry editor in DAS. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go up to uh, tools, make sure that we have geometry editor selected. Okay, and we're just going to select the, uh, basically any part of the female character. Okay, so just select the, like this little part in her shin there or whatever. Okay, and we're going to right click that. And what we want to do is we want to go to geometry assignment and we want to select set auto hide faces for attachment. Okay, and the one we want to select here is page sneakers. Uh, the character doesn't have any clothes except for this. Okay, we'll just select page sneakers and go accept. Okay, so what's going to happen now is if I go ahead and make those sneakers invisible, we'll have the same thing. So the sneakers are still invisible right now. So what I need to do is select the sneakers themselves, right click on the sneakers and go to fit page sneakers to, okay, and then we're going to select none on this, okay, and accept. And once we do that, if we make the sneakers visible now, now we can actually see the feet underneath, okay? And we can just go ahead and restore that. We can right click and fit page sneakers to and select the Genesis female character and go ahead and accept, okay? And then if we make those sneakers invisible, they'll still be there, okay? So that's basically the first fix. And when you export this character to FBX format, of course, obviously after loading in the T-pose, which we'll talk about later, uh, you won't have any problem and you'll have a successful result. Now, the second way to fix this issue is to actually go in and modify the DAS data file itself for uh, Paige's sneakers. So I'm going to go ahead and I've started a new project here. I'm just going to reapply those sneakers just so you see we're not kind of, there's no tricks up our sleeve here. And we just go ahead and uh, make sure that we uh, don't have the, uh, we have the mesh hidden there. So what I want to do here is I want to right click on page sneakers there and just go to browse, uh, browse to file location. Okay, and once we do that, we can see the page sneakers uh, dice on file right there. What I need to do is go back into the DAS 3D library. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just cut off all this stuff and go into the DAS library here. Our DAS library, there we go. And go into the data file here. And in data, I'm just going to search for page sneakers. Okay, so page sneakers. Okay, uh, make sure we spelled page right. There we go, page. Okay, so one word. So I'm just going to go into the page sneaker folder here. Okay, and we have this uh, G8F page sneakers uh, Dyson file. Okay, so what we need to do for this, we need to right click it. Let's go ahead and just copy it and uh, just control V to paste it. We just want to make a copy because we're going to modify the original uh, Dyson support file here. Okay, so I'm going to right click and go into edit with notepad plus plus. All right, now the there's a lot of stuff here. You can see tons of uh, code and everything like that. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and take out a certain part of the code by pressing Control F to search. And we're going to search for graft. Okay, this is the area of the code that'll be responsible for hiding the polygons and everything. So let's go ahead and find next. I'll close that down. Okay, so there's a section here called graft. And basically all the way up to this uh, extra section here, you can see the hidden polys and uh, a bunch of other stuff here. What we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click on all these lines. I'm just going to shift and click on all of these lines here and again from this uh, closed bracket here to the extra in parentheses there or in uh, quotes there rather we want to delete all that stuff so just go ahead and backspace it all and we're good to go we can just go ahead then and file save 
and save that. Okay, so we've just basically modified the original data file for the sneakers on how they apply to the character. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete these sneakers now. And let's try and reapply them. And go back here to wardrobe and find the sneakers. Let's make sure we have the character selected there. And go to page sneakers and reapply them onto our character. And now you can see, boom, we don't have any hidden polygons. Okay. Now, obviously, you may not want to have that as a permanent solution. So that's why I have the backup file there uh, that I created there. So you can just uh, this one right here. Okay. So you can just, again, delete the original and uh, restore it if you want. Uh, we'll just go ahead and do that. Just delete this original here. Whoops. And then take the copy off of this one. Okay. Just keep just to return it back to the original. Or you can, you know, add all that code again if you've pasted it out somewhere or you're really good at coding. Now the third fix comes into play when you may have someone who's uh, custom hid the mesh. Okay, so it's not automatically been hidden, it's cut, been custom hidden. And I'm just going to show you quickly how to hide and unhide certain parts of the mesh. So again, make sure you're at Tools and Geometry Editor. You can right click and go to Selection Type. I like to have, uh, you know, Vertex or Selection Mode rather. I like to use uh, Marquee Selection myself. Okay, so you can just basically have your character selected. Uh, we're going to apply these dark storm pants to her before we do that. Okay, just so we have something on top of the legs there. Okay, and let's make sure that we have the uh, the character selected. There's the dark storm pants right there. We'll make them invisible and just kind of click and drag and select this part of the mesh. We can right click on that and go to geometry visibility and go hide selected polygons. Okay, and that'll just hide basically everything there. And we can throw the pants on top of it. Again, a resource saving uh, tip there if you have... Uh, want to reduce the poly count of your characters in a game engine or something like that. So maybe you come across something like this. Some guy's giving you a character where it has uh, you know hidden mesh and you want to import it into Character Creator 3. But Character Creator 3 is saying, no, we don't recognize this. All right. Uh, what you want to do in that case is, again, just go ahead and um, we can just uh, make that invisible. Make sure the character's mesh is selected. Right-click anywhere on the mesh. Go to Geometry Visibility and you can select... Uh, show all polygons okay and that'll restore all the polygons to your character and then you can throw those uh dark storm pants on top of that and you should be good to go from there now another issue you may encounter is when your character basically has a different structure uh to the general genesis 8 or whatever daz character you're using okay so for example uh, we have the genesis 8 uh, female standard female here let's take a look at her structure you can see the the basic nodes that we have right here Okay, nothing out of the ordinary. However, I've also loaded in uh, Leone HD, which is taken from Victoria 8. And if we twirl that down, you can see that there's an inode, okay, which we don't want, obviously. All right, so the problem with this is if you try and import this character in uh, as it is, you're going to come across that same issue in Character Creator 3. So what essentially we have to do here is basically take the Genesis 8 female character and apply all those uh, materials and morphs to that Genesis 8 character from the Leone HD. So let's go ahead and start with the materials here. There should be a Leone All Maps. Okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, load that in. And there you see it, Instatan. All right, pretty cool. Uh, then we can also go over here to Shaping, and we need to select the uh, Leone Body Apply, okay, just to make the uh, body consistent as well. See, it'll uh, match the bodies up there. And we also need to select Leone Head Apply as well, okay? And you'll have the head, okay? Now, you may uh, encounter with the head, uh, you know, the morph looks a little bit different because there's part of Victoria in there as well. You can go over here to head and then uh, just basically reduce the Victoria head just like that. And you can see the head shape change right there, okay? Just make sure that you uh, have the right shaping uh, parameters that you want. And again, you can just fully customize that. And there you go. The characters look exactly the same. And one of them can import into Character Creator 3. This one right here with the basic uh, Genesis nodes, but the other one, Leone here, has the separate eye node, and therefore Character Creator 3 will not recognize it. All right, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about why you need to apply the T-Pose DUF to your character before you export. There's actually three different reasons. Uh, the first one is to remove any residual body or face animation you may have missed on your character before you export it. Okay, and also it, it gives you a default transformer pose, which is better results, which results in better uh, fit for your clothing when you import it into Character Creator 3. And also there's a slight uh, foot pose issue, which I'll show you in just a moment. So we also have another tutorial that talks about, you know, how to import the whole process of how to import, uh, export your character from Daz 
and import it into Character Creator 3. I'm just going to review the uh, process here for applying the T-Pose really quick. So the easiest way to find your T-Pose folder is just go basically any, any library in uh, Character Creator 3, even the project library. You can just right click and select Find File. Okay. And wherever you have it, uh, some people will save it in different locations. So there's, this is by no means uh, a uh, universal uh, path, file path. I just have mine saved in the D drive here under a separate folder. What you want to do is make sure you go into the Character Creator 3 template folder. Okay, this one right here. Again, there'll be a religion uh, template and then uh, creator, Character Creator 3 template folder. And you want to go ahead and find the DAZ resource folder here. And in the resource folder, you'll find a number of different T poses. Okay, for G3 females. G8 females, G2, and Highwire and Michael Victoria, etc. Okay, so what you want to do is uh, with, with this uh, explore window open, go back into DAZ uh, here, and then with that, uh, which one is it here? There we go. So what you want to do is again, just uh, since I have page loaded up here, she's a Genesis uh, G, from from a Genesis G8 base uh, female. So what I want to do is just basically click and drag the female T pose onto my character, just like that. Okay. And she'll be set up with the correct T pose. All right. So this is uh, ideal again when you import it into Character Creator 3. It'll resolve any, any sort of uh, clothing uh, fit issues. Uh, it also removes any residual body and face animation and adjusts the uh, foot pose. Okay. So again, what you want to do is go to File, Export, and Export here, uh, blah, 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 blah. And uh, I'll just go ahead and uh, you know, we're just going to say temp right now, test. Okay. And uh, you want these settings right here. You want your FBX 2011 to be set to binary. Okay. And everything you can go from there and accept. And I'm not going to export it right now because I already have a couple of different uh, page versions exported. Now, the first one I'm going to show you when I import into Character Creator is without the T-Pose. So you still can uh, import the character without the T-Pose applied, but you're going to have an issue, which I'll show you right here. So again, if you go to Transformer, I'm going to select the no T pose page. Okay. So this is when we exported page without a T pose. All right. So you can just go ahead and select no here for import or for saving the project rather. And what you want to do, of course, is make sure that your sneakers are labeled as uh, classified as sneakers. Your braids, the hair is classified as a hair item. Okay. Now you have the option here to just get T pose and this will take you directly to the folder. Okay. So really you don't have to go into the library and right click and browse and all that stuff. You can do it at this point here. You can apply the T pose right here. Okay. At this window, it'll say get T pose and you can just get it from there. Okay. But let's go ahead and take a look at what happens if we import without a T pose. All right. There's a page imported. So again, you can see right away, there's a current issue with the fit on the clothing. So the, the chest area right there, there's some mesh breakage. And that'll occur often if you don't have the T-Pose applied to your character. That's one uh, issue that occurs. Now, the other issue that occurs is you can already tell the feet are kind of slanted, okay? They're kind of curved outwards in a way, okay? So if I go to like this angle, for example, right here, you can see that the outer soles are a little bit higher than the inner soles, and that can create an issue. When you save these and reapply them, they'll reapply like this to any character, all right? So what you want to do is definitely apply the T-Pose. Let's go ahead and uh, try that one more time, Transformer. Let's load in correct page. And again, she already has the T-Pose applied in DAZ. We don't need to save this project. And again, just classify the sneakers as sneakers, sneakers as shoes, braids as hair, and press OK. And then you'll see those sneakers import incorrectly. Okay, so let's take a look at these. You can see now they're all straight, perfectly straight. And we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, the outer edges going up at the uh, whatever. Uh, you can press Control G if you want to take a look at the grid, make sure your uh, everything is even, okay? There we are, basically settled on the ground, and the T-pose, everything else should be fine. You can see that material issue on the chest is fixed as well. Uh, so that's one reason that it's important. Another reason why it's important to apply the T-pose, the DUF T-pose, to your DAZ character in DAZ before you export it to FBX format. So that's about all I wanted to cover in this tutorial, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit about uh, how to fix a couple of common import issues when it comes to DAZ characters into Character Creator 3. And again, our forums are always available for more information at forum.reillusion.com. And I hope to see you in the next video.